Hi guys, Doug Mercado here and welcome to my cleaned up man cave. While in Fortune Fire, I'm often introduced as a Kali martial artist or edge impact weapon specialist, but I'm also a knife designer. Today, I want to share with you the different knife designs I have out there as well as my collaborations. Let's do this. So my first journey into knife designing was with K-Bar knives over here. It was during a time when I was doing some training with the Force Recon Marines from both the Philippines and the US Marines. The Philippine Force Recon were carrying this knife. It's basically a design taken from the US Marines Mark II K-Bar knife, except a bigger blade. That's not a knife, that's a knife. But in working with them, we got to make this, which we call the K-Bar Big Brother. Fittingly, they know me as Kuya Doug. Kuya means big brother. Now this blade right here, you see on the top right there, with the painting over it, that was a workhorse from season one of Fortune Fire where Jay Nielsen stabbed that into a car door. So it survived Jay Nielsen's blade test. So that's at least the cool thing about this K-Bar Big Brother design. The next plate we have here is the MK Ultra. That's a design by Jason Knight. Now, Jason and I talked about creating a blade for production that is of his famous design here. Now, I have my own Kukri blade here. Now, by the Gurkhas, when they're using this, they're made famous by them. It's got a nice weight for chopping. It's got that curved uh, blade, but it's also got a thicker spine. So it's very forward heavy. Jason Knight's design is a lot lighter. It's still got the thickness so it got that curve to cut and slash it's great for thrusting but simply redesigning the handle which most filipino blades that are curved gives you good retention at the same time you can do some nice chopping work with just the flick of the wrist but it is much lighter having the false edge here to cut on the backward on the backward swing and use it as a true survival but fighting knife we call it the MK Ultra because Jason was kitschy about it. I didn't know what the MK Ultra was. But in the end, I found out also that the MK stands for Mykaida Knight, not the CIA version. Now, if you had the Kukri, we also decided to make a nice folder version, which is also the MK folder version, which is a nice Kukri folder for those who enjoy something that you can have and carry around as opposed to this big survival knife right here. Now the blade underneath the Kukri is the Cortada with Russian blades. Now the Cortada actually is tied into the time with the K-Bar Brig Brother because when I was training with the Forest Recon Marines, the Philippine Recon Marines were carrying this, which is their version of a Ganunting, meaning a half a scissor blade. Now it has the same design for the idea that if it's curved in, it's gonna slash and cut inward. The only thing that I did with the Cortada was I wanted a more pronounced and more acute tip right there so that it's more acute that I can cut with that. It's got the same cur curve down there for cutting, but also for thrusting as you're doing that. Of course, the design you have there is a version of my tattoo that I also carry around with me. Going down the pipeline, we also have the Cortada dagger, which is a smaller version to carry that. It's basically a Ginunting dagger with the same idea. It's got the same features. It's curved, it's got that curved handle there for retention, for slashing. Also, it's got that acute point for thrusting, cutting and thrusting. Now we come into my tactical blade designs. Now my first venture in tactical blades was the dart knife with Fox knives. Now the dart means direct action response tanto. Direct action response means to have a tactical folder that opens up with simply a catch, which is the Emerson catch. So let's say it catches in the clothing with one flick of the wrist, it catches and deploys. So that's the beauty of this. Now it's got the retention ring like a karambit, but it's also straight blade so that you can use it this way as a straight blade for whatever use you have as an everyday carry blade. Right beside the dart, are the Mako blades, the original Mako and the Mako version two. Mako being the shark style blade. This is the start of my collaboration with Bastinelli Knife Designs. Now, we wanted to have a karambit style with tension ring, but a different blade design where the dart was a straight blade. The Mako still has the catch right there that you would catch to open it, 
But when you hold on to it, it's like a true claw of nature where it claws in and you can control that. Where a straight blade would be a different angle and the karambit would face outward. The Mako design is this way. Now, if you're going to hold it in this way, it's almost like those Persian blades where it's got a curved slashing and cutting blade. This is my first design with Bastinelli knives. So when is a blade not a blade? When it's a rescue tool. So right beside the Mako are the MK tools, Markaida Kali rescue tools. And the difference here is that the idea of having that retention ring that you have here, this is the one with the case over here, if you wanna have that, or you can just put a clip on this. Now the beauty of this is that it's not a full ring where you're not allowed to have rings in some place. It's got a carabiner, so after use, you can just clip it to whatever you want it to be. But at the same time, you got your seat belt cutter right there. You can also use it for, uh, you know, wrenching for oxygen tools and everything else and this is the fixed version we also have the folder version of that same thing it's designed from the dart but at the same time there are no blades to it you see this is a Phillips screw head that you can use also for deployment that opens up into your edge right there and what you have here is Phillips flat it's got a flat head screwdriver he's got seat belt cutter you still got your oxygen uh, tool opening and hexagon things to open up and the ring at the same time is not a full ring it is a carabiner for retention if you need to put it away so when it's a karambit not a karambit folding blade when it's a rescue tool. The next design that you have here right beside that are the DM Talon. You got the folder and the fixed blade. My first kind of karamit blade with 511 tactical. First, the fixed one is when is a blade so much lighter? It's when you have it skeletonized here where you can see right through that. And you can see that the design, like a talon, it's not curved like a claw, but sharp like a talon. It's much lighter here. So when you look at it this way, it truly is like a, when you move with the blade, it's just part of your hand. You don't feel the weight of the blade at all. Now, came up with a folder because some people don't like to carry fix. For the folder version, it also has the catcher so that you can also do a one-handed opening. And rounding up the last over here is actually also on the first one, the black version of it is on the first of the blades is the D-Max, that was with the Max Venom. And the D-Max to me was the first design we talked about with the Max Venom collaboration, was to have something like a neck knife, something that's flat, that can keep us a neck knife, but at the same time when you deploy it, it's easier to just deploy and fit in the hand nicely. It's not a very thick, wide blade, but a smaller blade as a karambit, even when you're using it in this particular th motion, it's quite light, but at the same time tactical, and the first kind of neck knife idea for a karambit blade to have. Now in the bottom is another of my fixed blades with Bastinelli knives. When I met with him, I talked about a very earlier time when I actually had a broken pair of scissors. My first broken scissor was a blade I played with. So we decided to come up with the Lepicour, which is like your very flat line kind of blade, a broken pair of scissors. But what I love about it is that it's so flat, it doesn't imprint when you keep it around your body. It's a nice version of also a broken scissor, more like a scaffold. This is actually a whole set of the four aces. The second ace in the hole that we got right there is the Pika Karambit. Now I wanted to create the Karambit back to what it originally was, a very small hook blade right there that is curved in its use. The Pika Karambit idea we both came up with was to go back to something that's very small to carry around, something that's very light and just has a small hook, almost like a little punch dagger with a hook right there. Now the third ace in the hole that we got with Bassinelli knives is the spade. Now the spade right here is because the tip is like the spade. And once again, we're talking with the four aces. We wanted a little robust blade. It's a little bit thicker than the Bicor and the Pika, but at the same time has the serrated edge there. So it's a heavier blade. If you want serrations, you can use it to cut and use some heavy duty work with it.
Well guys, there you have it. These are the current designs I have out there. Hopefully it gave you a little bit of insight why they're created. It's not just about creating a blade, it's also the why. Why was it created? What's the story behind it? From K-Bar knives to Jason Knight knives, to Bastilelli Creations, to Max Venom, to Fox Knives and Russian Blades, now 5.11 Tactical. Hope you enjoyed the little presentation here, and see you soon on The Forge.